now we move on to the next section family physicians are personal doctors for all people of all ages and all health conditions they are the reliable first contact for health concerns and directly address most health care needs they are the ideal leaders of health care system and partners of public health next topic is family physician for whole person care the chairpersons for this session are dr sunil abraham and dr lissy vincent dr lissy vincent she completed her graduation from vinayaga missions medical college and her post graduation in family medicine from sundara medical foundation later she pursued her interest in ac accident and emergency and did a fellowship in emergency medicine from dr mehta's hospital she is currently working as a consultant and academic coordinator family medicine faculty for clinical skills and simulation training at kims health trivandrum she loves teaching and upskilling the young generation of family medicine specialists she had a major role in the inception of academy of family physicians of india tamil nadu state chapter in the year 2016 and currently ser serving as the president of afpi tn state chapter speaker for this session is dr raman kumar sir i welcome raman sir for the talk good morning everyone um, it will be a joy to listen to dr raman who is well known and well suited for this important topic about the whole person care over to dr raman thank you uh, organizers for uh, reshuffling my session i was supposed to speak yesterday but because of the fright uh issues i was to um, i'm given opportunity to speak now uh sorry for overlapping your tea break now um, no everybody woke up early so uh this is my uh, brief uh, introduction i wear many hats i am convener of specialist board in family medicine national board of examination i am national president as you all know i was the past president of wonka world organization of family doctors 2018 to 21 and editor of journal of family medicine and primary care so uh, and also recently founded in shoot of family medicine and primary care linked to my private practice and clinic i've been asked to talk about whole person care which is a very very important uh, perspective when we are looking at the curriculum of family medicine dnb national board of examinations one of the issues with the previous curriculums or many other existing curriculums was that the perception of family medicine been you know uh, is uh, amalgamation of uh, many specialties like you know bringing family medicine is like you know bringing general medicine obg pediatrics and kind of you know combination of four five specialties into one and that is one of the areas we were concerned so if you read the new curriculum we have tried to organize the core concepts and distinctions of family medicine in the curriculum and through this wonka uh, world organization of family doctors i had the opportunity to, to travel around world i was on the world scripty board for almost 6 years previously as young doctor representative and later as south asia president and i have the opportunity of traveling different parts of the world and seeing the health systems so you just saw the range from you know rural area of practice to the urban chennai practice how it differs and you know to know about the whole picture whole person whole system you have to see the things from a distance you know but our education system is way that you know we are taken a journey through different departments so whole person care is the one of the core concepts of family practice which is different from the organ based care gender based care age based care and and when i was looking at literature i could find test books also and one of the problems with the patients community that we serve is that you know fragmentation of care has been a challenge since the specialist system evolved this is a system everybody used to be a general practitioner in the beginning in the allopathic system two centuries back or a century back even in india in 50s and 60s everybody was a general practitioner in india but the the way the specialization evolved in india in 80s the tertiary care system the hospital systems the super specialist system started to build up the people have started feeling the heat of it you know fragmentation of care i can see my friend dr jana here good morning so fragmentation of care is one of the challenges because we human beings are as a whole you know 
in in our spirit in our you know soul in our body mind everything is important as a person especially grown up adults we are very complex beings not just you know parts where we can be fixed like motor uh, you know bikes or motor cars or you know equipments which can be replaced and you know serviced the human body you know has a different interface and this brings confusion to the patients you know even today if somebody is headache and to this morning we were uh, talking about the uncertainties recently i had a patient who came to me with headache blood pressure was 160 by 110 and fortunately i wrote on my you know electronic medical record the patient is hypertensive not taking any medication for past 3 months and then patient also complete of slight blurring so i you know referred also to a eye specialist patient went for a eye specialist review after 10 days he had a stroke 32 year old male so you know you never know the thing came back to me because they wanted to change the record because i have written you know not on any medication for past 2 months they wanted to change that because of the insurance reason because insurance was refusing that you are a history of hypertension were not taking medicine so is complex and you know uh, for a headache where should the patient go is an eye doctor or a you know neurologist or a you know dental person or, or a sleep specialist you never know so it's confusion when you do not see person as a whole and to see the person or system you have to see it from outside you know if you want to see a country you have to you know travel around the country if you want to see the earth you have to see from outside space you know see entire earth you have to see from outside space so whole body can be you know seen it is very difficult to bring and develop this perspective when you are working in a hospital when you are train in a hospital because you is a hospitals or always department wise you know uh, and there are multidisciplinary care maybe there multi specialty care is there but to see it you can always be best judge of a whole person when you it is done in a community setting it's because you are seeing uh the person from the outside uh, in the, the hospital premise and this barrier of you know looking at patient from the hospital perspective is our limitation because it starts from our mbbs training itself we have you know 20 disciplines on our mbbs we are trained to all those disciplines we are evaluated we have to pass all those examinations all our medical teachers are specialist doctors all all our medical teachers are specialist doctors so that mindset begins from there itself so whole person care is a core concept but this is not inculcated in the curriculum of mbbs so we are lacking we have to accept it primarily and when you take family practice you have to emphasize on this part of it whole person very very much so what is whole person care who is whole person it is by whom where how these things are very very important uh in that context and before i move forward this is a small reader i have been you know showing this in multiple talks of mine there is a goat tied up with a rope of 2 meters and the grass is kept at a distance of 10 meters how does the goat eat the grass any answers yes break the rope any other the rope is very strong pull the grass or somebody there to help and this is the problem of the you know you know the answer of this question is the goat cannot eat grass and the same is true with the medical education system because last day our teaching training is taking place in tertiary care centers even the most of the family medicine training is taking place in tertiary care and when we talk of you know community based practice it is very very difficult for the grass to break the you know the, for the goat to break the you know you know the chains of the you know training or the mindset or the context it is very very difficult if you are not trained in community itself or if you have never had any insight of it so this is challenging if you continue to have that tertiary care mindset or the hospital mindset in family practice itself so it is different and when people ask how it is different this is whole person care this is community based care this is community context and these are the distinctions of family medicine you know when somebody asks what is difference between family medicine and general medicine or internal medicine or seeing a patient 
pediatric patient in hospital setting, tertiary care setting, or seeing the same patient, a headache patient in community setting. How the headache is of neurology is different from headache of family practice. So unless you see from the perspective of whole person, if you do not break the barriers and ch chains of the, your mind that has been inculcated in your you know, training, it is very difficult to develop this context of whole person care. And this is what medical education system makes us. You know, wise men, all very you know, big experts, super specialists, very competent people surrounded everywhere. And many times we are questions, what do you become after doing family medicine? What is family medicine? Many often, you know, people will call family medicine family planning. <laughs> you know, this is not confusion, but this is, you know, kind of mindset of, you know, training, entire training system. We have the largest medical education system in the world, but it is not solving the problem of 1.3 billion population. Why? Because it is not about numbers. We need doctors. We are continuing to talking. We need more doctors, more doctors. Now we are producing 100,000 doctors. But if their doctors are trained on this kind of mindset, we will not be able to solve the problems of the population, the community. So whole person care, you know, this is an elephant. And, you know, wise men and the elephant, we all know, wise men would never, you know, in a, in a tubular vision, will never be able to get a whole picture of it. So the same is true with the, you know, uh, you know, you know the, the fragmentation of care in organ systems, genders, age groups. This is the same problem is existing and often, you know, patients are confused like this in a system. If there is no navigation in the system, there is no one to guide, friend, philosopher and guide that we call a family physician. People will often, you know, suffer in spite of having resources, human resource, tertiary care resource, best of the capacities, the problems will not be solved. So this is how the, you know, this is a paper, interesting paper on development, emergence of specialization. This movement started in Paris, in France, in Europe. What, largely what we follow in India, allopathic system, nobody calls it allopathic system. It is, uh, you know, uh, uh, nobody actually talked to some Europeans and they said, what is allopathic? They do not know about this term. But we as Indian designate the Western medical system or the European system as allopathic system in India. And this is a paper I would not go into details, but this is how it is started in 19th century. And it is picking up in India now. And people are frustrated everywhere. You see complaints about the hospitals. They are very good hospitals, but then people are also frustrated. They are afraid of going to police stations and hospitals. Because they may be stripped off of their, you know, income, their, you know, uh, uh, and in spite of having uh, all, uh, you know, resources, insurance, you are not assured of best care many times because it may you know increase your expense and this is also a mindset issue if you you know because of the hierarchy of the care providers you know we have a mindset where a super specialist is more knowledgeable as a person than a basic doctor or general practitioner or a doctor who is working for 40 years in a primary health center and this is also the power distribution you know we have more primary care doctors you know, almost voluminous, you know, MBBS doctors in India, but the power structure is such a way that, you know, in Na National Medical Commission, there is no family physician. It's a specialist monopoly. By default, there is no family physician medical teacher at medical schools, unless it is exception like Velour or St. John's or, you know, Calicut Medical College. These are exceptions. It is not a mandate. So this is the hierarchy of service provider. This is also, you know, killing the mindset. And this is reflecting upon the, you know, loss of whole person care. So students, you know, I see most of you are residents, new joinees. It's always challenging to see, you know, it's not, it's, it's, it's easier. You know, many people are talking about identity crisis of family physicians. You know, how do as trainees, when we go to hospital departments, we are talking about we are not being identified uh, as a specialist, for example, or what is family medicine? They are not recognizing it. Or people are passing negative comments. And this is not your fault or not their fault. This is the system of medical education that we have been following for past 70 years. So 40 year experience, a basic doctor who is working in rural setup, who should be designated as professor of rural medicine, is being you know placed at the bottom most lower most of the hierarchy and somebody within a you know just any md qualification 
not even able, competent to read ECGs because we see many private medical colleges, you know, there's no competency. It is not matching with the qualification and licensing. Still, the person ha holds a more prestige. So, you know, there's a specialist doctor perceived to be more skilled, professional recognition is more, social prestige is more, higher monetary compensation perceived. I will emphasize on the last point, higher monetary compensation. Is there any campus interview in India at any medical college? Any medical qualification? Any, any, any specialization? MCH, DM, is there any campus interview? No. So everybody is same. So if you start your practice, your income will be same as the highest trained person of medicine much earlier. So it is all peer recognition system, peer, you know, kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, belief system whereby we, you know, think that certain person has achieved more, more knowledgeable. But in terms of finances, everybody is at the same level, it's the same ceiling, especially in the medical field. There is no differential here, especially. And being family physician, you are independent. You are not dependent on any system. You as a professional can be independent practitioner by your own. You can be your own master. You can be owner of your own destiny. And that is more important. We often talk about, you know, professional independence and autonomy. That cannot become true or a, you know, dream. That cannot be a truth without financial independence. And as we just had a discussion, without much of investment, without taking any loans, you can have professional and financial independence. You can earn at par with any postgraduate level without any employment, formal employment, this is truth. I'll talk more about that. Profession is noble. There is professionalism, but how to maintain that professionalism? If you are employed in Gates Foundation, you have to go by the policies of Gates Foundation. If you are employed in Ministry of Health, you have to carry forward the you know, goals and objectives of Ministry of Health. Wherever you are working, you are supposed to be forwarding the objectives of that organization. Many times there will be conflict, your personal conflict with that organization and you would want to do things differently and you would not be able to do because you are employed. You are employed. And only way to free yourself from this cycle is to get out of from this mindset of employment. And this is the whole picture of the you know, career pathways of family doctors, whole person care and we have to think in that context and this independence of ours may not look directly translated into monetary terms in the beginning, but this is a big, big freedom card to you. It is given to you when you opt for it. And you are privileged to have this card of freedom. Professional freedom, financial freedom, and success of life is, you know, somewhat different. We had our sir speak, is our aspirations. Success is a bigger thing. I will not go into that philosophical discussion, discourse. All of us have, you know, defined different, uh, 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 you know, terms. And, but what they do not teach in MBBS is important because this is also the big picture, whole picture. It's not just about us. Unless we understand our own context situation, we will not be able to understand the context of the patient. So financial success is very, very important, at least financial independence. Most of our problems originate from our dependency or employment. And we are not educated on financial independence. Most of us do not know when we as receive a you know, bank transaction SMS debit or credit what is the meaning of debit what is the meaning of credit what is the meaning of credit card why it is called credit card why it is debit card debit is something when it goes out of from your account credit is when it comes to your account but credit card is paradoxically credit card whereas it is loan debit card is your own money but it is called debit right so it's a basic things what is your net worth we do not know what is the meaning of millionaire we do not know. I'm not talking about, you know, being capitalist, but at least, you know, what is the meaning of financial independence? What is the meaning of retirement? Financial independence is one when you achieve a status of, you know, a system where you do not have to work on day to day basis to sustain your living for yourself and your family. That is financial independence. And that is possible only if you start your financial independence early in a family practice and it can grow into you know, a, a system whereby you are financially free. 
like most of the big doctors we know, Naresh Trehan in Delhi and all, they are not doing day-to-day -day surgeries. They are just managing systems. They are not dependent on their own. There is a limit from, you know, our founders are of this, uh, Dr. Saitu Raman, and he was a successful neurosurgeon, right? And one day he decided that, that whatever, how many hours I may put in in my, you know, work, in my day-to-day -day life, I cannot touch upon the lives of the thousands and millions of people of my own locality or elsewhere. And this is a reason of founding the system. Now, being a urologist, he could found a system. 30-bedded hospital became a, one of the largest training institution of southern uh, Tamil Nadu. So when you start small, wherever, in a hilly region, small region, think institutional in a big picture, big way. And then only you can big, you know, don't just think from the perspective that you will start family practice and you will remain in a family practice in all your lives. You have other things to do. Legal framework as a citizen, we have Aadhaar card, we have passport, we have, you know, voter card, driving license, all these give you liver passport. Most of the time we do it when it is necessary on us. But understanding, developing ourselves and as a legal citizen is important for being, capturing the whole person care and without legal in, in understanding of the system, you cannot succeed as a citizen. You have to f align yourself with the legal requirements of country. Language and literacy is very, very important. Most of us, many of us nowadays are on spending on time on reels. You know, TikTok reels and all these things are very popular, especially with the younger generation, school children, during the COVID pandemic and all. But reading a newspaper is very, very important. At least one English or local language newspaper in our day-to-day -day life is very important so that you are connected with your system. History and society, civilization, all this thing is very, very important because you are treating your community. Now, Madurai has a history. Madurai, I was talking yesterday with someone, you know, has, you know, cluster of villages. The lifestyle has not changed for thousands of years here. Now, Madurai's lifestyle may be different from Chennai's lifestyle. Chennai's culture is, is the same state, same people, but Madurai and Chennai is different. In, in many ways. So, political economy of India is, you know, is, 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 is a private economy now. We are moving towards more and more privatization, we have to understand. And health system is largely privatized, largely privatized. We, all of us, many of us want to have government jobs, teaching jobs and whatever may be, but it is live at private. So, be it, uh, you know, large hospitals or small hospitals or small clinics, you have to work on your own independent practice and you have to gain your independence in this political economy. Unless the system is changed politically, it is a free market economy. So you have to think your career pathways, your career in a, in a terms that is aligned with it. Entrepreneurship and leadership is never a subject in it. And how to make change? Many a times we are frustrated in our systems. There are complaints that we are not being trained properly, we are not being given right opportunities, we are not treated well. But how to change it? We have to negotiate through this. And this is important meaning of contribution again. Writing a letter, a poem, a book is a contribution. Our national anthem is written by Ravindranath Tagore. That is a contribution. He did not bring a big, big industry. He was not an industrialist. He did not employ, you know, millions of people or thousands of people. But his contribution is in the form of national anthem, which is a poem. And that binds, you know, billions of people. Yesterday, we stood all together here on a national anthem. And that is the meaning of contribution and not necessarily. Mahatma Gandhi was an advocate. But do we know, know him for his legal practice? No. Arthur Conan Dial, the writer of Sherlock Holmes, was a doctor. How many of us know about it? He is a writer. So don't go by what is being given your identity and don't be limited by the framework of thinking you are being given through your education system that is often binding. So if you have free time, because of that, you know, even if you are a family physician, you have free time. Even during your residency, <laughs> use your mind, be free. Think and focus on your uh, hobbies, singing, artistic work, creative work, social work, inclinations, and keep those things, instincts aligned. This will give you a bigger picture of whole person care. Unless you don't know yourself, you are not liberated from inside. It is difficult for you to you know, see other person's perspective and put yourself in other person's shoes. So whole person care is not just you know, about physical body, it's about emotional, social, behavioral, spiritual, financial, 
And these are the dimensions which are not control of a family physician alone. But being aware of this context is very, very important. Uh, medical graduate pathways will not go to details. Family practice have been talking a lot. But how to establish a whole person care practice, I'll be talk about family practice in terms of finances is a small business. This is another dimension where I've been talking. It's like, you know, any community, this is a marketplace. It looks like more of American marketplace, right? But every tribal area, every rural population, every suburban population will have a market. And this is where we are supposed to be located, start our practice, independent professional financial practice, and be aware of the things. And pharmacy, at least representative of the health is there. And family physicians supposed to be in practice. So these are the options to practice whole person care. And solo clinics, polyclinics, I'll not go into details because this was the theme of the previous uh, discussion. And as a medical experts, most of the time, we are focused on this scholarship, knowing about clinical things. But this is the can-made professional development framework of a medical expert, medical graduate. And you see, scholarship is different from professional success. You're reading, you know, we have often seen gold medalists struggling with practice. Not all, but you know, there are exceptions. Professional practice is different from your scholarship. Knowledge is different from the you know, professional practice. You have to be communicator, collaborator, manager, health advocate of the people. It is very, very important thing that we are employed by the community. Understand, our employers are our patients. We have to treat them as our you know, masters in that terms. And this all can be, you know, done. We had this, you know, slide presentation in the morning by Dr. Sunil Avira. It was This was, you know, why family practice is important, whole person is important. Because for every patient who is treated at tertiary care center, there are 250 times patients in the community. And this is the study repeatedly, uh, you know, is coming again. And this was studied in the 60s. In 2000, again, published in New England Journal of Medicine. So community-based morbidity is more. It is the whole, 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 Holistic system, what we see at hospitals, if you focus your career mindset at the one person who is admitted in tertiary care and people are fighting to have, you know, the, the, the disciplinary, you know, boundaries at the hospital setting, whereas the opportunity is there in the community, it's like, you know, 250 times more patients in the community. Actually, I'm also talking in terms of finances and community needs. So this problems evolves again from the mindset of the specialist because we have been trained for you no know, pathway where we are basic doctors specialists and super specialist now you google super specialist in uk middle east canada anywhere in the world you will find zero result because super specialist word is used only in india exclusive i'm not you know going into that but this is the sub this is a marketing terms which have become grown into in the mindset of the people become the part of the popular culture and we have to understand the whole picture of it so that we can when it comes to our own identity our own work our own belief system or our own identity as individuals we should be able to answer what is specialization so i want to break your mindset for specialist setup our thinking that somebody who scores more at neat pg is more knowledgeable. No, this is not true. And just a small slide, zero to one, is about entrepreneurship. This is a textbook of entrepreneurship. And you must read it if you want to go into, you know, financial freedom framework. And this is the horizontal line is a conventional. Whenever you do something conventional, you top your school, it is a conventional wisdom. You go to a good school, it is a conventional wisdom. You score high in plus two, it is a conventional wisdom. You qualify NEET UG, it is a conventional wisdom. You qualify NEET PG, it is a conventional wisdom. And there are two disqualifications of conventional wisdom. Number one, it is very, very competitive. You top your 10th exam, problem is not solved. You become MBS by a doctor, your problem is not solved. You become any specialist, your problem is not solved. But what this book Peter Thiel says, he was co-founder of Elon Musk, is that you have to take vertical lift. And that is not 0 to 10. Vertical not 0 to 100, only 0 to 1, little bit. So you have taken that vertical lift already by opting family practice, which is not a conventional wisdom in many terms. Don't go by that you, I got only this by neat. This has happened to you and enjoy that and you will be successful. At least you go by the most wise people of this century, Peter Thiel, Elon Musk, 
all these people are the wisest people who are talking and giving this lesson in their books so life span is limited if you spend your life it is zero to zero all competitive life and the other disadvantage is is very less profitable we have low margins if you start a restaurant it is a very competitive market you just start a practice it is a very competitive market so you have to do something differently unconventional which will give you a vertical lift off and you must know about the range so we have depth but we do not have range many times and this is not my thinking it is not i am teaching this is a non medical book it's a very popular book it's called range and how generalist triumph in a specialized world because everybody everybody is requiring specialists all systems but systems are all driven by specialists on the task or the competency level but at the system level i will give you example of doctors and engineers are most qualified persons above them in government system there are is officers who are just graduate who are not phds and above them there are politician who are not even graduates but politicians are at the top and above politician are the spiritual people <laughs> for that you do not require any knowledge and this is the complexity hierarchy of system system is driven by generalism not by specialized and this is one of the you know it will give you understanding of this is very very important to break the you know system the thinking chain of the you know whole person care so the vertical lines are specialized lines and a horizontal this is not about medicine this is about everything that is you see in the world industry politics journalism legal system anywhere you go you see this system there are specialist people and there are generalist people generalist people is the horizontal plane this interface you cannot compare with the horizontal lines this is a different domain family practice is a different discipline you can't compare it with other specialization and you have to understand this this is a general diagram not related to family practice or anything medical generalists are multi skilled all systems all organ systems is like swiss knife the, your interface in the society is maximum your individual you know earning capacity is maximum you see headaches you see you know limb pain joint pain back pain red eye you know sleep problem depression problem contraception problem uh, any problem that may come in uncertainty but you are most competent person to do any of this problems and your income capacity is maximum as an individual professional as compared to anybody and this is the genius of all times considered in the contemporary world leonardo da vinci who was either there is saying called jack of all master of none this is not true family physician not jack of all master of none it is a higher order of thinking generalism is a higher order of thinking this is not for everyone it requires a higher capacity mental capacity to understand the importance of generalism leonardo da vinci excelled in many fields he was master of all he was a master painter mona lisa he was a master of sculpture architect musician mathematician engineer inventor anatomist many of the medical drawings are fundamentally drawn from the paintings and drawings of leonardo da vinci 16th century that you know four centuries back he drew the designs of tanks parachutes and helicopters that are spring resembling to the current designs and these people are called polymath the geniuses are called polymath they are not called super specialists i mean you have to understand the broader sense so what is polymath polymath is one who excelled in many fields like ravindra tagore he was a poet the national anthem is written uh, national anthem of three countries india bangladesh and sri lanka the national anthem is written by tagore now you we have you know they have done n numbers of people who have done phd on his music on his literature especially you know in in bengali literature music he is one of the master of all things but do you know that he never went to a school he never qualified 10th examination he never qualified plus 2 he was not even a graduate he were home schooled so your education is a enabler but it is also a limitation and he was one of the nobel laureates of his time so to be polymath is a polymath remember generalism is about being polymath this is the higher order of than specialization it is very very important to see principle of family practice has been already difference only thing i want to emphasize here now is as these represent the nine uh, rings in our afpi logo 
So we represent in our logo the nine principles of family practice. I'm not going to details. Uh, is, you see this the test book and the nine principles have been already discussed in the previous session. Principles already done and this is the nine principles of family practice. So we represent in holistic care. I'm, I'm tr just trying to give you a you know, thinking process change in your mindset because many times it comes to us again and again. I have this you know, challenge of identity. Why challenge of identity? Because we have not trained into that system. And these are the foundational concepts. It's a first contact care, whole person care, person-centered care. So many times we say, how does a treatment of diabetes by an endocrine person, internal medicine person, general medicine person, family medicine person, ambiguous person, how it is different? It is not different because it is all evidence-based. It is not dependent on the provider. It may vary on the patient's condition. This is patient-centered. Your treatment or plan may vary on the patient, not based on the competency of the doctor because mostly we follow the same principles, the same standard treatment guidelines as anybody would fall. We just have to be aware of it. I'll not take much of time now. Uh, uh, these are the, you know, ecology of care, already continuative care is the same problem, headache, same problems come with COVID, same uh, patients comes again back with diabetes and this continuum of comprehensive care is you know, addressing anything that may come. Epidemiology is illness, you know, headache may turn into stroke, headache may turn into tumor, headache may lead to your, you know, dental issues, eye issues. But when you see it is the first beginning of the disease, medical journalists, we already talked. So I'm going backwards. So managing complexity is important. This is a complex thinking. One person may have multiple contexts and uh, you know, uh, system care of multi-morbidity. One person having, for example, in COVID, all systems are evolved. Pre-COVID, post-COVID, during COVID, multi-systems evolved. How one person can solve all these problems? Majority of the cases, community-based can be solved by family physician. Long-term care, clinical prevention practice, wellness is all, you know, uh, rooted in family practice, home care again is a multidisciplinary whole person care. It is into the community, to the home of the patients. And this is all about the family medicine. I will not go into detail because this will take longer time. It is a discipline, philosophy of care, vocation, surface interface. And these are some of the you know distinctions of family medicine. We are towards the end of you know family medicine is a distinct test book, journal, disciplinary body that we have and conferences. This one is the Sydney conference, world conference. Another one is coming very close in January is in Bali, Asia Pacific conference. So you go to the other side of the world and see how it is happening in different parts of the world. And this is just a final, buy this book for your financial knowledge. It's a very interesting book in Lay Merchant, Romancing with Balance Sheet. It is about accounting. This is by a chartered accountant. Read it for your own knowledge. It should start it being MBBS itself. This is my clinic, Doc24. You know, my practice, my wife is a co-founder. We run a company, pre-hospital care standardization. We have app-based care, digital monitoring, remote monitoring, home care, community clinics. This is the same process that is I am doing in, in the suburbs of uh, Delhi as a private limited company. So I'm talking more in terms of financial things because I run a company. Many of us do. We are focused on personalized care, all age groups, doorstep, comprehensive, community-based, aligned to community needs, service interface. We have, you know, 24 into 7 helpline. And we have 24 into 7 helpline. If you call this number, we are able to generate around 100 calls a day in a, in a day normally. And this is the high-risk community. This, this people who are living, who are rich, who are upper middle class, middle class, who are paying capacity are facing the same accessibility issues that are being faced in hilly and tribal area related to primary health care. You know, there are a lot of hospitals around, but, you know, the accessible care is not available. You are working in shifts. You are working in Canadian shift, British shift, American shift. You are traveling from Noida to Gurgaon. Both husband and wife are working, children going to school, parents are staying home. Somebody falling ill, you have two cars, but your father cannot drive in that traffic. You have car, but the traffic is clogged. 
So the same accessibility issue is there, even people who have money. So uh, many times I say even the president of India has a primary care need. It is not that the president of India should always be treated as a tertiary care center. The primary care needs are different. Everybody has a primary care need that should be addressed by your primary care doctor. And everywhere spectrum from rural hilly area to urban areas, this need remains same. So this is about the whole person care, it's fragmented. It's the same how you see it as an art form, as a deity, as an animal, as a you know, nature, whatever. So whole person picture Context is very, very important uh, when you are a family physician and you have to see from the person, other person's perspective, not from your own person, your own personality, your own limitations of a specialist or training or your mindset, what you have done for past 10 years. So these are the final <laughs> slide. Read non-medical books, keep yourself fit and healthy, maintain creativity, continue to ask questions, train yourself, why do, do not teach in MBBS? Value journalism, be useful to your family, friends, and the country and society. Be useful. If you are useful, you will make sufficient money. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dr. Raman, for that interesting talk, which not only spoke about family medicine, but also about life and many other aspects. We have time for just quick two questions or comments. Just two people. As I told you earlier, See, the success of any, even especially medicine, there are two things. One is the science of medicine, another one is the art of medicine. So we have to combine this and this art part is the main thing what you are telling now. And here the success depends upon the academic excellence and the non-academic skills. See, all the, the success, the secret lies for you see, you are telling success people like Rabindranath Tagore and many people and people who are making a lot of money. And, and that your intellectual skill, it is only, they say 20%, but you may, you may increase it, we may make it as 50%. So success for, for that, our academic skill is only 50%. But all the other part, 50%, non-academic skills, and important that is your IPR and communication skills. So with that, if you do, and that is how the quacks are making, how they are successful because of this non-academic skills. So people, please develop focus on that also. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. I would now like to request Dr. Narendra Jana, sir, to honor the speaker and the chairperson. Thank you, sir. 